Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We've got a few announcements to make, and that is for events scheduled for the coming week. Monday, July 30th through August 3rd is the British Soccer Camp. Uh, it's for ages 6 to 14. It'll be held from 4 to 7 p.m. at Memorial Park, and you can register online. Also, the Farmer's Market is every Saturday from 10 to 1, and I guess 1 o'clock is a new closing time. Uh, the other item is this Friday, July 27th, uh, sponsored by Stearns Burton Fund, and it's open to all ages at 1 o'clock p.m. at the Highbridge Elementary School, uh, the Museum of Science, Science Magic, is going to be there. Two o'clock at the Highbridge Hill Elementary School Sub-Zero, learning how to make ice cream with liquid nitrogen and free samples. Six o'clock at Memorial Park, tie-dye. Bring your own white t-shirt and we will have everything you need to make your own tie-dye design. And last but not least, eight o'clock, movie night, The Parent Trap. Uh, they will have snacks for sale, bring your blankets, chairs, and bug spray for a fun night watching a movie on the big screen. That's all uh, July 30th, August 3rd, 4 to 7 p.m. at Memorial Park. Uh, the British Soccer Camp is, cost is $95 and pre-registration is required. And last but not least, registration for the fall soccer is open and you can register online. Check the Parks and Rec page on the town website for more info and to register. Okay, this evening's agenda, uh, 605, acceptance of gifts for iPads for the fire department, 620, pool conditions and possible refunds. 635 capital improvements program and then old and new business. Did I miss one? I actually have a citizen here, Kevin Willett, I was hoping to sneak in before we get on with the regular agenda. Okay. To talk about the Purple Heart Town status. Mr. Willett? If uh, nobody minds, I'll only take five minutes of your time. And uh, I just <coughs> wanted to. Uh, present the town of New Ipswich with our uh, purple heart flags for town. Uh, I'd like to show them to you and uh, present them to you. So these I'd like to see hung up uh, along, along the roadside. I think, uh, I think these will look really good. I think all the veterans uh, will appreciate it. And. Um, August 5th, I have a motorcycle run for Purple Heart Veterans starting in uh, New West Plaza. Um, I'd like these to be displayed before then so that as the ride moves through town to our next objective, which is the Milford VFW for a pig roast and live music, um, I'd like to see these flown before then up till uh, August 7th and then after that uh, to take them down until next year. Uh, so. If that's okay with the town, I'd like to ask the town to uh, honor that. Where do you want to put them, Kevin? Uh, right here in town. Uh, maybe every other flag. So it'll go uh, American flag, Purple Heart flag, American flag, Purple Heart flag. Um, if you have extra space or extras left over, I have 10 here that I'm giving to the town. You guys can keep them, uh, display them, you know, uh, for, I, I would ask for the first week of August up to the 7th. Uh, so from August 1st, to August 7th, and then take them down on August 8th. August 7th being uh, National Purple Heart Holiday to honor Purple Heart events. 
I know you're asking as if though this is something that we would be doing. Uh, I think there's going to be a discussion amongst the board and yourself about whether we go and start putting up flags for uh, organizations that would come before the board. Right now, typically, what we've always had are the American flags down there. And I guess the other thing we have to look at as a board is putting those up and who does it? We've got the highway department that right. handles the others. Okay. So. Uh, just for the record, <coughs> these flags are not uh, promoting any organization mm -hmm. uh, or entity at, at all. These are mm -hmm. just uh, Purple Heart flags. It has the Purple Heart metal emblem on it and then combat wounded. It's just uh, to show support. Mm -hmm. So there's there's no uh, uh, if you fly these you know you're not endorsing any organization or uh, entity. It's just the town and the highway department displaying their uh, you know, affection for their for their combat wounded soldiers. When's that ride again? That's August fifth. The ride is August fifth. Yes, sir. David, you want to discuss this further, but we have an agenda for tonight, so it's kind of... You want to postpone it until the next meeting? Well, he wants to do it on the 5th, and the next meeting is until the 7th. We go through the agenda and see what we have for time at the end, and sure. the three of us yeah. can discuss it, kind of thing. You want to do that? You're okay. welcome to say if you like. And sure, I'll stay. Have yeah. that at the end. I okay. also have uh, flyers, promotional flyers for the event with more event details if you guys are interested in uh, receiving those. I have those on hand. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. This is the If I can get that one back on with one more copy for infrared. Okay. Um, the New Epswich Firefighters Association was given a gift of, can I Thank have mine back a minute? And Here you get go. Copy. I, I want the original anyway, so unless you guys need to keep the original. So the Firefighters Association was given a gift of four iPads, the cases that go with them, and all of the installation brackets and everything for each of our apparatus, engine one, engine four, the rescue, and tanker one. <coughs> um, the Firefighters Association then in turn would like to take that gift and donate it to the Nova Scotia Fire Department, and they know that you, you as a board have to accept any gifts that come into the town. Um, we've looked at, everything is included, their, their Wi-Fi, their 64 gigabyte with Wi-Fi and cellular coverage right now. And we're looking at US Cellular. We've been in contact with them for four iPads. We're gonna look at two gigabyte right now just for the four iPads because we don't see a lot of usage of data that we need right now, a lot of the data we can do when we get back to the parking lot at the, at the fire station. Um, so we think right now two gigabytes will cover everything that we need. Um, we're looking to put on them uh, what we call Rover, which is our communications, our data communications with um, dispatch, which will give us the ability to show trucks in motion to them so the trucks can hit responding and it tracks them to the scene at dispatch. It gives us the capability of, um, we're in the process of putting pre-plans in for a lot of our major um, companies in town, the mill, things like that, that would show closest water sources, dangers. Um, we have the capabilities of putting into them um, pre-plans if we have somebody that is house found or on oxygen or something, it'll pull up that pre-plan so we can know when we get to the scene. Um, the other thing we want to put on them is manuals like has, hazmat material, manuals, the ERGs, um, rope rescue manuals, the electric car manuals that you can put on that show where the batteries are located and everything. So that's what we plan to do with them. We're not going to put anything on them as far as games or anything like that right now. They do have a password 
that is going to be known just by myself and Matt Hatcher, who is currently our communications representative, and he'll take charge of all of that. Um, the Apple portion would be set up with you have to have a town, you have to have a credit card, so I've used the, my town credit card to set that up. Um, but again, we're not going to be spending any money on it. You just have to have it in order to initiate the iTunes account, is all we have to have. So $56 is it looks like what we're spending right now for two gigabyte per month for all four iPads. We have a little bit of a reduction in our communications line right now because we turned in three of the five phones that we used to have that were hooked up to our account. So we think we have enough of a savings there to make up that $56 difference. And then we'll budget for it for next year. If we don't have the money, then we won't activate the cellular data on it until the first of the year. What yep. phones did the highway department have? What phones did the fire department have? We had five connections. <clears throat> we had five different connections for just the regular phones. When we changed those over to Comcast, we got rid of three of them. So we now only have one. We had six, I'm sorry. So we now will have one in the office. There used to be four in the office. We had one downstairs in the fire department and one at the radio desk. And so we're going to just have the one in the office, the one at the communications desk, and then one upstairs when we finish that room up there. So we turn those back in, so we save that money. So apparently you get charged for every extension you have, which we don't use. Firewalls where people aren't going to be on sites that they shouldn't be on, that kind of stuff. It will be password. Um, we, I don't. We probably could put. Can we just activate that? Don't iPads have that? There's a parental control type. Parental thing. control. That's what I was going to say. So we can activate that parental control to do that. I mean, it's no different from them having access to the computers at this station, really. Um, we can set them up with individual passwords <coughs> if we need to for the officers. For next year's budget, that's going to roughly be another $600, are you saying? It's $600 a month. a month. But our bill shouldn't go up any more than what it is this year because we've made that cut. Do you know that that's what you saved? No. That, that's what the cost is. No. Know. Yeah. I'll have to look. I thought that thought that Deb said that the um, I thought it was like twenty bucks a month for each extension that you have I'm, on top of the main that sounds about right. Yeah. Nineteen and change is what I remember her saying. And we turned three of them back in. So it should wash. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's a necessity and you folks are going to be able to use them, it's a tool to do your job and do it better at a minimal cost of $640 a year, I'd have no opposition to it. Motion. Motion to accept um, <coughs> the gift of the iPads and um, approve the uh, fire department to um, set up their cell as long as it uh, within this year's budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then the only other thing I have with me is we were supposed to be on the agenda for this. I'm just going to pass kidding. it out. I'm kidding. Passing it out. Um, this is the revision of the Sauhegan Valley contract that we our MOU that we brought to you a couple weeks ago. The revisions, the recommendations from the attorney came back to Jim and I, and Jim and I sat and we moved them and added those to the MOU. So this is the updated one. And my guess is from here, it probably needs to go to your council 
or whatever and you do with it and then once you guys approve it um, it just has to be signed off by the board of so I can the board of so you can have who chose the font size do you, you like it? I wanted to make sure you could I was read gonna say, it. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. So when you say you received uh, feedback from council, that's from SVAS's council? No. I had I had sent it to Bart Mayer mm -hmm. and shared his comments with Meredith. And he had recommended it be sent to Primax. And I had shared those comments as well. And I think my last email to you said, do you want to incorporate these changes or shall I? Yep, and I said I'd get back to you. <laughs> okay, okay. So you you and Jim. So Jim and I sat today and incorporated some, the changes. Some, we don't, there's some here that we're not going to incorporate. Okay. I'd like to see the correspondence from everybody. Yes. And I think uh, it's, it's in, in your, your folder. Yeah. Is it? Yes. Yeah. I was gonna say forward to you. And then I emailed you this morning a hard or this afternoon a hard copy or a digital copy of this the, one. Yep. Yeah. I know you like it. So it'll probably take us another round to go back and compare and contrast. And yeah, and then if you, I mean, if it's okay with you, because Jim and I were talking today about we're not attorneys. Um, so if you make the final changes or have somebody make the final changes, and then if you're happy with it, then it goes, then we'll take it to the SEBI and board and then put it into effect however you want to do it. I do have some concerns with some of the things that were in there that I just don't agree with. Um, they came from Bob. I mean, I, I was very surprised at his comments here. Before you read any of those comments, I'd ask, but not, because the board hasn't, at least I know I haven't read no, any of this, and I'd like to read through this before there's any further discussion on it. If that'd be okay. <clears throat> I'm just going to tell you what's off the table, but that's okay. <laughs> Good. Good. Thank you. Good. Thank Thanks. Okay. Yeah. We're going down to script engine three to get ready for the new engine. No delivery date yet. Hopefully, it's in the queue for stenciling and all that. Page two. Diana. You're on. Hi. All right. So um, last week we had lessons going on. So the way our lessons work, um, we do two weeks of lessons, Monday to Friday. So it was a total of 10 classes. And due to um, a maintenance necessary backwash Monday night, the water was cloudy Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we ended up having to cancel those swim lessons during the second week. Typically our breakdown for the second week, we do a water safety day, um, a lesson instruction day, test day, and then Friday is a family swim day. So we missed all four of those. Um, during one of them, we ended up doing a safety scavenger hunt out of the water, so they weren't actually in the pool, but they covered all the safety topics that they're required to cover by the Red Cross, just not um, in the water. And then the other two days, we didn't hold activities, and the family swim obviously was canceled due to the conditions of the pool. So they ended up missing a total of the two really instructional lessons. So what we ended up devising to kind of compensate um, is we made coupons for families for session three that they could use for $15 off per kid, just to compensate for the loss of the four classes, um, which comes out about even each class if you divide it is worth $350 times the four is $14, we rounded it to 15. Um, and then we've had some complaints about that from maybe five of our 30 families that are looking for direct reimbursements um, and I did the math, and a direct reimbursement per child for everyone is about $1,000 in reimbursements, which is why I decided against the reimbursements and instead to do the coupons. The coupons are also valid for 20% off a pool party, which is a $40 value if families can't make session three. And then the out-of-town residents, because lessons are a bit more expensive for out-of-town residents, also received a family swim day pass. A day pass is anywhere from nine to $15 value. It costs $3 per person to swim at the pool if you're an out-of-town resident. So if they bring three people, they save $9. If they bring five, they save 15 So whatever it ends up being to kind of even out what families lost dollar-wise for the loss of lessons. Um, so I talked to Carlotta, received a complaint. So we talked, um, we decided to bring it to you to see your thoughts on the issue and how we should proceed from there. 
I got a question, just because you sure. can speak awfully quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes sense to me because I work oh. it every day. But and I'm yeah, like, that's what it is. And yeah. I'm like, I'm trying to follow along. Yeah. Okay. So the problem was there was a cloudy pool. Yep. Out of a swim lesson time period is five days. Um, so the total is 10. 10 and days. And missed four in the water, but we were still able to use one as our safety day. So in my head, we kind of missed three. Three. I guess. Okay. And most of them are agreeable to use it in the next sequence yes. of lessons. Yep. So then there's a handful that yeah. are not. I would say approximately five out of the 30 families. I would say give them a refund and because we didn't, I'm assuming we didn't have right. guards there working if we didn't. We did on the, the safety scavenger <coughs> hunt day. Um, yeah. And then one other day we did do like a coloring activity with a couple of kids that came, um, but that was really it, so. The only thing I'm concerned about is if we do a refund for a couple of people and then a couple of other people hear about it, they would prefer a refund opposed to the coupons. So my thought was we have to do the same thing for everyone kind of thing. Well, the, the person that I spoke with um, wasn't planning to send their kids to this third session. Okay. So basically said, the coupon does nothing for me because I wasn't going to pay for them to go to that third session anyway. So I'd rather have my money refunded for the session that I did pay for. I appreciate the effort you went into to come up with a yeah. coupon. <laughs> it sounds like you did some thinking. I, we yeah. did. We sat uh, down and collaborated trying to figure out the best thing to make everyone happy. Right. It is no, an impossible it, it sounds like you did some number crunching. Um, Let me ask you, what's the worst scenario, worst case scenario? Everybody asks for their money back. It's, um, we had 67 kids this session, so if we refunded the 15 per kid, which is like the four classes lost, it's $1,005. Circumstance out of our control, if that's what it yeah. is, then that's what it yeah. is. Um, I would say I, those that. Right, I'm of the same opinion. For yeah. those that would honor your coupon effort yeah. that you're putting forward, I'd go with the coupon effort. For those that are demanding a cash payment, I'd give them the cash back. Okay. That's the opinion I'd be That work for you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think. I don't know how you track that to know that, oh, we have yeah. already paid them not yeah. to use the coupon, but. <clears throat> I know it makes it a little more busy for you. And a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate it didn't work, but. The other thing, um, I don't know if this would change anything. We do have, this is our swim lesson registration form. The last two sentences say that the town of Nopesuch is not responsible and the pool closes due to inclement weather. Lessons that are canceled due to inclement weather will not be made up. Although it wasn't inclement weather, it's kind of just, it's out of our control and out of our hands as inclement weather, but it might no, be I, yeah. I, I'll argue that because we could have planned the maintenance at another time Yes, but the way no, just yes. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm sorry that you know to yeah. to do something to the pool that we know could affect. It shouldn't have affected the pool like the way that it did because right. of the age of the pool and the filter and the leak and all of this, all of the issues Different that we've got areas. going on that I've got estimates flying around to fix. There was no way for us to know. Like when I backwashed and I hit that button, I saw it come out. I was like, oh, this is bad. Wow. <laughs> Can't, and you can't hit the control Z, you can't undo it. So there, was no, there was no going back. So, but, you know. Okay. Uh, I would, yeah, we yeah. go with what we got. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what other wording you want to put on that form for next year, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would definitely say you know. Uh, although I, I've got to say is that I think just to be fair, if something did come up like that, I know I would say, hey, you know, I didn't get the service, let's get the money back. Yeah, yeah. and it was an unintentional <clears throat> yeah. mishap that it happened. We're going to deal with it, so yeah. we'll deal with it. And, that's um, and then, what would you say for? They missed four classes in the water, but we did cover safety topics one day. So what would you say would be the correct amount, amount to reimburse? And then the out-of-town residents did pay 50 for the two weeks. So should they get a slightly higher rate depending on? Whatever it is proportionately. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, to your first question, is 
part of the lesson program mm -hmm. that you would have been doing it out of water anyhow or we do a safety day usually we have the kids put on the life jackets and jump in the water and see how they float we'll pull them in on a buoy and they love it but so, so we just the life jackets out of the water we showed them the buoy so it was almost the same just just without as much fun okay. yeah if it's a 10 days scheduled is that what it is i'm mm -hmm. still not doing the math yeah. as well and one day a week is the the dry time i'll call it where they're not actually in the pool um we would do a, a safety day and some just one pool. day out of the 10. Mm -hmm. and if you did that then I, there's a nine day reimbursement they have coming back you, no it's only three 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 well it's yeah two, oh, i'm sorry three eight yeah yeah if i'm you, fine with if the you three. got one of the okay. if you yeah. yeah if you were able to cover i, yeah. I would lay if you were able to cover 99 percent of what sure. you would have covered yeah, on that exactly. day anyway right then then you do a three-day reimbursement. We kind of have to because you were paying people to be there to do yeah. what they did. So mm -hmm. with the other days, there was no cost. So yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. I'm good with three days. Sounds good. All right. Yeah, I think that's everything I have. Oh no, it's not. No. Someplace I saw something here about a seventy thousand dollar. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not. I um. What did I miss? <laughs> yeah, you so you didn't flip over the piece of paper. Yeah, right? that's what. <laughs> And that's just Sorry, that's I'm just happy. like um, Billy from Quality Pools giving me his like a ballpark estimate. I have no idea. I just called um, the company today that does the estimates for the system, and they they have an older estimate for us. It hasn't been updated, so they're going to update it and send it to me. And then Billy just did our pressure test this past Saturday for the leak, and he is drawing up an estimate right now, and will send that to me. He thinks it's in the three feet, and it's a ten to fifteen foot section piece of pipe so all right let's slow it again let's <laughs> bring this thing under, back under over. the new deck uh, of can't, course can't right? be outside of the new deck no nope. let's first talk the filter system mm -hmm. is this filter system issue uh, directly related to the issue with that backwash okay so what was that problem or what is the anticipated problem? Yeah, so the, the due to <coughs> the filter, our turnover rate is really low. Um, it's supposed to be close to eight hours for us to filter the whole pool. It takes us right now right around 10. Um, and the state won't shut you down for it, but as the filter gets older, it's going to take longer and longer. Um, so it means every time we backwash, it takes longer for the water to clear up, which is why we had to close. And they. Um, Someone thinks that there might be a broken piece in the filter actually, which is why when we backwash, we get sand coming out. There's no way to know unless we take all the sand out and it's a big, like big drum, like the size of one of these tables. So it's kind of, we've just been kind of finagling it the best we can, but it's definitely gonna need to happen in the next five-ish years or so. That system is so old down here that I, I mm -hmm. think we're fortunate it's made it as far as it has. Yeah. And in all honesty, I think we need to get a firm number on what it would take to replace yeah, it. And exactly. if it's a got to be done thing, then we'll have to get it done. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the opinion I'm of because, yeah. I mean, if it breaks down, we're just going to be in worse yeah. shape than we are now. So so what are we replacing? A the filter. component or the entire? The filter system. It's I, I'm going to guess it's 30 years old. Would I be? It's the original from when the pool went in. Right. Yeah. So it's at least 30 years. I don't know how long they last, but I know it's got to be limping along. Yeah. It's, there's no doubt. Well, it only works three months out of the year, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so don't some people. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think we ought to get an estimate on what it would take yeah. to replace it. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, if it's got it, and if it's got to yeah. be a worn article, then then that's you know, what it is. That's what right. we do. Right. So okay. is that something we should do charge? You know how much we have time? in the. Uh, I talked to D. Daly just the other day, but I don't know. Um, she passed along, I think I still have this piece of paper, from Mindy's time when they were looking at doing, I think they're looking at doing repairing the filter house, because yep. the, the, the house that the filter in is falling apart, but not the filter. To me, the filter is a little bit more important than the building it's in, but, um, so I have that, and that was actually for this year, I don't know if you want to copy it. I just need it back because it's the only one. I'm no, you can have that. Okay. Yeah, you can have that. Yeah. I was more concerned with yeah. uh, the value, and I put it on my other computer what we have in that. It was um, capital reserve. Yeah, the estimated cost of that project to be done this year was fifty thousand. So I don't know if if that money was saved for this year and then not used. If that could be no, all right. Those are just 
plans. Yeah. 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 It's a wish thoughts. list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the second item is the leak. And where would that leak be? Not anywhere near the items that are going to be replaced due to the filter. But it's so not like at the bottom of the pool. It's not at the bottom of the pool. It's not under the deck in the three feet section. So concrete still has to come up. And how did they isolate that that's where it is? Um, so Billy did a pressure test. Uh, they hook up sensors to the outlets into the pool. Um, and it's a, it's a best guess. It's the best you can get without ripping up the deck as is. Um, but he marked it out for us. He thinks it's about a 10 to 15 section of pipe under the deck there. Thank you. So I'm going to get estimates for both and then yeah. Yeah, yeah. pass them along. Back to the filter. Should we ask um, the building maintenance guy, also known as my brother Mark, to look into um, cost to replace that filter system? Get some numbers in there? He can or Brianna can. It's yes, um, the company that I, I called today, they do the their filter replacement, so right. they're, they're drawing up an estimate for oh, awesome. what it would Good. cost to place the filter. So I have an estimate for the filter coming in and then an estimate for the leak coming in mm -hmm. to fix both. Great. So I'll pass Good job. along as soon as I get them. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see three estimates so yeah. on both yeah. projects, actually. Well, it's especially on the filter project, because mm -hmm. that's going to be costly. to expend that money so that would have to be a, a one out of gold but next for the year, filter or for the repair for the filter replacement if it's even on the repair we're going to have to look to see where that funding would come from right so thank you no problem yes thank you, you know if there's yeah, any questions great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and like Jay said, thank you so much for the math and work you did coming up with yeah. a solution for, yeah. for those people. I think that's no that's great work and, and positive, yeah. proactive thinking. Yeah. Thank you. We did our best. Good. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. I have a word with you. Do you mind if you stick around? Yeah, I got nowhere to be. Cool. Look at the CIP, but you want to. Yeah. Actually, we don't have the CIP folks coming in. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I just wanted to let you know that they are meeting with department heads, and the process is underway. And I thought that that the D wanted to come in and meet with the board, but apparently she wants to meet with the department heads first. Okay. So that's great. It's in the works. Awesome. Open a discussion on the um, quest for flags. Yeah. I'll be I I for something like that. Um, I'll be honest. I I'm in favor of it. I would like to see how how we'd be able to handle it as far as the DPW because there that's like you said that's who normally goes down in the cherry picker or whatever and puts up the flags and takes them down. Um, <coughs> I, I like the idea of doing it for that one week to honor. I mean, we, we honor our veterans on other days. This is a, a very select section of our veterans. Um, I'm in favor of it, but I do understand that there are, we'd have to figure out how it can be done. But, but I'm, in fa I'm in favor of, of having the flags up for that week of Purple Heart Week. Um, as as a, <coughs> And if we're going to say we're a Purple Heart town, I, I would like to see us, you know, support the week as well. So that's my opinion on it. I'm wondering though, do we need to have ten flags up? Well, I, I, that's what I was going to ask Kevin. <coughs> even if I was thinking, even if we concentrated them right in the center of town as you come down the hill, maybe you just put five of them in a ten flag area. You know what I mean? Start at Main Street and stop by the bank. You support American flag, purple hat, American flag, purple hat. That was that was my. Uh, right I, the, I don't know how many flags are up there. I've uh, counted them. I just bought 20, uh, 21 of them. 
I gave 10 to Milford and uh, one to the VFW post that's hosting the event. Yeah. And then the other 10 I bought for New Upswich. I'm going to take a guess. I put them flags up in the past. There's probably 50 of them on Main Street, Turnpike Road, and then down Temple Road. Right. I just, I, I, honestly, I really just wanted to see Town Hill uh, with them, every other flag. And if there's extras, I can take them and then hand them out to other local So you weren't businesses. thinking from one end of Turnpike to the oh, other no, by the no. fire station? <laughs> I don't have okay. that kind of money. To no, no, no. <laughs> I, just, I, I need to ask because I was just right. curious. You, no, and that, and that was kind of my pick, just thinking, I mean, as as, as you as you came hill, down it's, Town it's Hill, it would just site. look nice. Yeah, absolutely. And it would, it would show the support and people. And I think, if nothing else, if it's up there for the week, again, it will get people asking, oh, what's that about? And, exactly. oh, remember, we're a Purple Heart town. Exactly. We support our wounded veterans. Yeah, I have no opposition to it either. I'm just trying to figure logistically. Um, you don't have any flagpoles, right? So that's... I don't. And... and I don't imagine we do either. So that's one of those, do you get the flag balls or are you expecting us to get the flag balls? Um, I don't know if Peter has any down there that he's thought, taken old flags off. I know, thought that the, yeah, the, those are on, on flag poles, right? They have, They're um, all on their own wooden pole, right? Yeah, there. you'd have to get a staff to put that on right. your flags. Yeah. And then we've got the issue of, again, we're shot. The manpower we're getting, down, we're down now. Again. I'll volunteer my time to put these things on <clears> myself. If, if it comes down to it, you need the equipment. <laughs> well, you could you could do it off a ladder, but could you? I'll reach yeah. out to a, you a could. local machine, uh, somebody who's got machines. Yeah, and ask a boom lift or whatever. Volunteer yeah. their uh, their their time, their fuel, their manpower to lift, hoist me up in that bucket, get these flags up there. I'm gonna do whatever it takes, though. Yeah, no, to pop ten flags up. And are the are they? I mean. Just because I mean, they always look, I mean, you're looking at them from the ground. Are they just like the standard, like household wooden yes. flag sticks? Yeah. Okay. So they, yeah. these have to be slid. They, they have to, right. the There's flags a, have to have the uh, the pocket to slide them onto, right? They're, they don't have the grommets to. No, they have a, they have the hasp on the top, and uh, I'm trying to think on the bottom. Yeah, because these these flags had the grommets on them, right? Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Oh no, they're not set up for that. Okay, no, look, remember, no, they're not set up for that particular flag. They're a different, um, yeah, they're a different flagpole. That, um, what am I? They're just like a carabiner hook on the top, and then on the bottom. I'm not sure what's down on the bottom, to be honest, but it's not, not for that style of flag. So you have to get poles. Okay. But again, I, I mean, I don't know, peak and. Sneak in putting up ten flags and think, but gotta get poles. We fight poles. Let's see. Yeah. 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 yeah so it's just yeah. So it's just the uh, yeah, like the standard ones you can buy in a. Um, think, trying to think where we got ours, like. Uh, job lots, I think, sells them. It's just the. You might go to Beltates and they might donate you some flagpoles, kind of thing. I'll reach out to uh, Beltates. Yeah. Uh, I have a, I have, we have, I have a pretty good working relationship with uh, Beltates mm -hmm. and a couple other hardware stores. So even if they can't cover it, um, I'll do the legwork and provide yeah, poles. Co co coordinate it with Pete, though. Talk to him. He might be able to help you out. That's my opinion. I don't know if he can. And who is Pete? Uh, uh, DPW director Pete Goey. Okay. He's down here Monday through Thursday, six to four thirty. Okay. And down in that shop. In the back, back, back building, yeah. Okay. And he well, actually Pete's probably there around five thirty. So if that's helps you out at all. But he's he's talking a.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by four thirty one. Uh, four thirty one p.m. <coughs> down there. I've, I've lived. But anyway, yeah. They so so these uh, these flag poles when I get them. Where would the town suppose that I, I, I place them? Just roadside? Um, no, they're going to go right on the brackets on the pole, Kevin, right? Isn't that what you're oh, thinking? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, what you were thinking was pop every yeah, other flag out? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So what we would ask you to do is when you remove a flag to put your flag in, yeah. when you remove your flag, put the flag put back. It back. Yeah. 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 If you talk to Pete, I think you can do a lot of coordinating with him. Okay. Yeah. On a side note, 
I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, the town has the Memorial Day Parade every year, and we don't see any new people that were in the service there. There's only the same handful of people. Right, no younger folks. Right. right. Is that we there go might younger? be two or three. Yeah. And I'm thinking we are a Purple Heart community. You've expressed that there are uh, veterans in the town. Uh, do you have any idea why they wouldn't participate? A lot of these young veterans, uh, in particular like my generation of veterans, uh, they don't, it, it just seems like they don't have any interest in, uh, in participating. And part of that is the reinter reintegration process from coming out of the service. A lot of these uh, young vets uh, have a tendency to kind of button up and pull the hatch down and stay, stay be reclusive um, I've, I've been victim to that mindset, uh, and I've, I've powered through it, I've gotten help. Uh, so what I'm doing right now with the organization that I'm working with is providing community events for, to draw out these young veterans. So I put together cornhole tournaments, I put together horseshoe tournaments, um, hot dog eating contests, uh, cookouts, and uh, try to try to find these young men. I mean, they're they're hard, and, and women as well. Uh, you know, they're hard to connect with and hard to reach out to. And uh, through these events, I found more veterans. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm using these events of mine as a platform to find to find and you know uh, find reach out and find out what their needs are in order to get them back out into the community. Uh, and be a part of the community again. Yeah. So, I appreciate that. So. I had a nephew come home from Iraq, and that was it. He didn't talk about it. He didn't discuss it. And eventually, it took his life. He ended up. Yeah. Uh, he checked out because he just couldn't couldn't handle it. And yeah, uh, we just we just guys that. guys like you. I appreciate the efforts you're putting forward to help these guys and gals that are coming back, and, and things aren't quite right. So, yeah. good um, job. Thank you. It's uh, it's not easy. It's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a grueling process. Personally, mm -hmm. uh, put you know, I put myself out there for vets. I give my phone number. You know, call me for anything, anything, anytime for any any reason. Um, you know, just to know that you know you're not alone. That that's helpful. Yep. Uh, so when I put on these events, I try to encourage networking, uh, sharing of of uh, you know ideas, brainstorms. I see, and, I, and as I'm walking around these events, I notice guys connecting with each other. You know, hey, this worked out for me. It might work out for you. Here's this guy's number. Mm -hmm. uh, this organization is great. This organization is able to help you. You know, and it it, it works. Mm -hmm. uh, I just have to I just have to keep going at it and provide more and more attractive events. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard that's a hard thing to do. Too. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so I've I've kind of. Uh, Gone, gone down the route of uh, looking for uh, 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 raffle items that would appeal mm -hmm. to you know to veterans, sure. such as uh, gun raffles, uh, tactical gear. Um, I have a really outstanding relationship with a lot of the local gun shops. Mm -hmm. They're, they've helped out on on a very very unreal level. Uh, it's like I have to take a minute back and. Yeah. You know, I, I feel myself welling up sometimes over the amount of support the community's given. So, um, I, all I gotta say to answer your question, uh, Mr. Lage, is that it's a it's a process, and um, it's uh, it's a it's a very difficult process, but it works and it's it's working. It's just it's working slowly. And well, if you could mention it to them that you know, I think because the one thing that I will say that I noticed being a selectman in town is uh, that Memorial Day uh, parade and commemoration to the veterans, there is such a large town turnout. And I think it, for those veterans, I would think it would be uh, a sense of appreciation that, hey, this community really does yeah. uh, appreciate I our service. So. It was just a curiosity question. I can't speak for uh, for, for <coughs> all veterans, uh, but for the veterans that I do know personally uh, and that I've served with, and uh, to include myself in this demographic, uh, 
Uh, a lot of veterans tend to discount their service, and that's because they wish that there were things that they did differently during their service, uh, things that they could have changed or done, they, they hang on to it, and they just ultimately end up discounting their own service, mm -hmm. however great it may have been. Um, and that's, uh, that's difficult for to go out to an event and have 100 people you know, thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, we're all appreciative of the support, absolutely. Uh, but sometimes, uh, and, and, and this saddens me to say, but sometimes, and more often than not, uh, these veterans, you know, don't feel like they deserve that appreciation. And it kind of pushes them away from the event mm -hmm. itself. Uh, so it's not something to take personally. It's something that, you know, is on my end uh, that I'm trying to influence encouraging these veterans to come out into the community and be, become part of the community. And so I think that, um, you know, over the next coming years, you'll see more of a veteran turnout. Um, and, and I think that'll be partially because of the community events and the networking opportunities, uh, as well as, you know, the programs and services that, uh, that the organization that I work with and our affiliated organizations, services that we provide for the veterans. Um, I think that over the next couple coming years, uh, you'll see a, a difference in that turnout. But like I said, uh, it's a it's a process. It's a slow process, right. and, it's, and, and for most veterans, it's a, it's a painful process. Mm -hmm. it's a very personal journey. Uh, so I hope that that, that answered your question. Kevin, okay. um, this is my number. If um, once you reach out to Bell Tates and such, okay. reach out to me. Um, I. I have some personal funds that I can help you out on really? some of the flagpoles, all right? Thank you. All right? Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Very much. I'll take some more of these flyers before we take Sure. Sure. Anything else? Um, I, have, I have one more, and this, is, and this is crazy. You can call me crazy for this, okay? Uh, so this is, one, uh, this is a long-term goal of mine for all of the Purple Heart towns for uh, Plan to produce here in New Hampshire. So uh, what I, when I, I, I went to visit a friend of mine in uh, Marblehead, Mass, and I noticed that they had a red, white, and blue divider for, for, the, town, for the town roads. And I thought that that was such an excellent display of, of patriotism. I, it just really, it almost gave me goosebumps, knowing that that was something that you know, is possible on a town level. And so um, I looked into it, and it's, uh, it's a lot of legwork on my part, but I'm willing to do it. Um, I'd like to see a, a purple line uh, in between the divider, the center divider of the town of Upswich and in every town, so that on the roadway, they can, you know, drivers that know what that means, it resonates with them, mm -hmm. and they, they understand that they're, that right now they're on a road that is a reminder of the price of, that some people have paid for, for freedom. And I think that that would be a, a great idea. I'd like to see uh, uh, some support on it. Um, and like I said, there's, this, is, this is on a federal level. I have to like go up and really, really do some homework on it. And this isn't something that, uh, that I really plan to, that I foresee happening within the year. This is, a long, like I said, a long-term goal of mine. Um, but you know, one day I will come back here and ask it. You know, I think on your local, <coughs> your local state roads, you'll have an easier time than maybe out on the interstates because these are all state. There's yeah. nothing federal about them, so yeah, that would be the um, NHDOT. So. It would help. It, it would help produce more of a uh, a purple. It would it would produce more uh, Purple Heart trails. Uh, mm -hmm. So the military order the purple. Purple Heart has what's called Purple Heart Trails. These are uh, roadways, highway systems. These are uh, uh, state roads, state highways uh, that a lot of you know uh, uh, drivers, motorcycles, truckers, you know, people make it a point to travel these specific roads just to say that they went down, that they did the Purple Heart Trail in Mass. And then that Purple Heart Trail connects to Connecticut and mm -hmm. Rhode Island and New York. And I'd like to see the Purple Heart Trail grow through New Hampshire mm -hmm. and, you know, inevitably to, to our neighboring state. 
it's right. yeah. So good goal. Yeah. So lofty one goal. goal. Yeah. A lofty goal. Yeah. It would help. It would help me and my uh, and my tenacity knowing that I have my town support. Awesome. Well, that'll be a discussion on another time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. yeah. So you, you're all set on the flags, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank Thanks, you, Kevin. Right. Okay. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming yeah. in. My pleasure. Uh, the next thing on the agenda was the request from... <coughs> Kevin, before you leave, that's 25 a bike, right? So that's... 25 rider, a bike. If rider you're a heart veteran, you get in for 20 bucks and you get a free arm's length of 50-50 uh, uh, raffle. But, but that's driver and rider, 25 Driver and rider. Okay. Thanks. Awesome. Any other questions? No. If, okay. uh, if there's anything you guys can think of, my contact information is on flyers. Yep. Feel free to reach out. Very good. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank, well, you. thank you. Thanks. Sounds very great. Much. Uh, request from the Switch Planning Board to appoint the two delegates for each for a three year term to the Commission for the Southwest Regional Planning Commission. And they're requesting that we appoint Bernard Hamill and James Coffey as the delegates. Both of those gentlemen have been contacted, I believe, and are in favor of it? Yes. yes. And I would want a motion. I'll make a motion to appoint Jim Coffey and who's the other gentleman? Bernard Hamill. Bernard Hamill to the uh, Southwest Regional Planning Committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. received uh, <clears throat> thank you notes from the River Center for the donation that uh, the town of New Ipswich and their residents had voted on during the uh, barn article. Uh, the River Center received a donation of $500 and they're thanking us for that donation along with the American Red Cross that received a gift of $1,000 from the town. Uh, and they thanked us for that donation. We have a, here a request for a waiver of building permit fees for security door upgrades at the Boynton Middle School. This is a grant-funded project for enhanced safety of students and staff. Fine. Gary Sonnerall. Motion to... Waive the fees for the security upgrade at Boynton Middle School. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This letter from the DES, do we know if Peter has contacted a uh, wetland scientist? I don't know. Could you follow up with him on that? Okay. Is this in here for? That was just in there for Jay's signature because okay. uh, the gentleman wanted the three. Law policies. We're going to review those this evening. I think based on our last meeting.
Collado, were you going to attend this? Yes. Since we got in that TAP program we talked about. Yep. We made the cut list. Nice. from New Hampshire DES urging municipalities to implement water use restrictions. Any interest in, any interest in a discussion on that? No. If someone wants to dry their well out? Yep. But <laughs> I was like, what are you going to tell somebody you can't, yeah. you can't water your, out of your own well? Go ahead. Can't legislate common sense. Yeah. Did we ever hear from uh, Mr. Rolino about coming before the board? He was the gentleman running. Uh, motion to go into non public under RSA ninety one A three. Section C matters which discussed in public would likely affect adversely the reputation of any person other than a member of the public body itself. Second. 